I think it's going to be a very interesting COP. It's based on the INDCs, the Intended National Determined Contributions, which is what the countries bring to the table in terms of mitigation and adaptation. We are currently analyzing um, these INDCs and we see that the huge majority of them do contain land use, agriculture, forestry and fisheries. So once they are being endorsed in Paris, that gives us a very clear area to work with and we will prepare with the countries um, their implementation strategies, their national adaptation strategies, their mitigation policies and work towards COP22 in Marrakesh in about one year where we will have a strong element on food security. Agriculture is still mostly rain-fed agriculture. It's directly dependent from national resources. We certainly have much more extreme weather events as a consequence of climate change, droughts, wildfires, floods, hurricanes. These are obvious, but there are also impacts which are less obvious. Plants need a specific corridor to grow. Things like nighttime temperatures or precipitation patterns do influence not only the yield, but also the nutritional value of climate change. And we have also to say, um, the poorer the farmers are, the stronger they are impacted by climate change. In addressing climate change, agriculture does play the key role. Firstly, for most of the countries in the world, adapting to climate change actually means providing food security, getting food on the table. But also, there are ways how more intelligent agriculture can actually mitigate the problem by reducing the emissions. Think about um, methane emissions from livestock or methane emissions from rice paddies. These can be addressed and it far we have knowledge on how to reduce that without compromising the incomes of farmers and without compromising food security. But it goes all along the food chain. Basically, we are working on just to name you one example, solar-powered trip irrigations, which reduce the need for water by using it more intelligently, but at the same time, they are also reducing the carbon footprint of agriculture because the pumps will be powered by photovoltaics and electric pumps instead of diesel pumps. At the core of the Conference of the Parties is basically that People, of course, want to address climate change and want to make sure that the global warming stays within the limit that you can still manage. But at the same time, countries want to be working on lifting their population out of poverty. We have to combine these two things. And climate finance is at the heart of it. And our advocacy goal as FAO is really to convince the state parties about the central importance of investing in agriculture to address rural poverty, food security, climate change adaptation and mitigation all at the same time. Agriculture has unique possibilities. There are billions of dollars mobilized in climate finance. Until now, the focus of this money is more urbanization, transport, energy sector, which are important. But we believe that agriculture should be a key area of investment for climate finance.